Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I want to get right to this. The two tropical waves I'm watching. Here's the Caribbean across the Atlantic watching these two big blobs marching across. They are still hanging together. And again, the computer models, this is why I don't completely rely on computer models, they didn't really have these tropical waves uh, this healthy at this point. So they haven't been doing a good job kind of picking up on them. So now here's what's going on. And I want to get into long term and how these tropical waves could be close to the Caribbean and the Bahamas and even the United States and potentially slide into the Gulf of Mexico. In the short term, we've got these two tropical waves to the north. You kind of see that orange shading there. You definitely see it over here. This is the dry air. So there's a lot of dry air to the north and even up here as they kind of march their way off toward the Caribbean. So here's the story. If these tropical waves can survive this dry air and stick together this weekend, I do believe once they get closer to the Caribbean and or the Bahamas, they'll have a chance to develop. Now the next two days will be critical, next really three days through the weekend because there is a chance that these completely fall apart. But again, if they survive the dry air, then conditions become more conducive for development down the road. I want to show you that in a second. I want to show you some of the computer models and dive into that. So here's the Gulf of Mexico. Here we are in the Atlantic and here's the Caribbean. There's also an overall pattern change happening. These tropical waves, regardless of if they develop or if they fall apart, are starting to uh, come a little bit more to the north and there's a better chance now that some of these eventually ride through the Bahamas and back into the Gulf of Mexico. And I'm going to show you these water temperatures in a second. They are out of control. And that's a concern, of course, if anything gets over the very warm water temperatures. Now, here's the American model. It's pretty close to the European model, so I'll, I'll, we'll just show this. And I want to talk about a couple other models in a second. Now, this one kind of hints at development down the road. So this is what's going on. This is later today. Here's the strong tropical wave right there. Now, watch as we go out in time. Let me take you out in time and then stop the clock. I'll stop the clock here. This is by late on Sunday, Sunday evening. Not much with it. So this is the critical point. Does it completely kind of fall apart? Or is there enough of this tropical wave that hangs together and kind of sticks together and then will eventually develop? So I'll be seeing through the weekend. Now, the American model shows it kind of falling apart somewhat, but enough of it sticks together where there is the possibility of some development as we get into next week. This is Tuesday. Look at that buildup of rain right here. By the way, more strong tropical waves coming off. But look at that surge of rain right there. That's telling me at least this is going to hang together as a strong tropical wave. Now, hopefully that's some good news because we need some rain in spots, right? We don't need a massive hurricane though. Definitely not. I don't wish that upon anyone. Hopefully this were to be completely accurate, but again, this is a model. This is one of them, but it does show some of the extra rain in the Northeastern Caribbean. By the time we get into, uh, this would be Thursday morning. So Wednesday into Thursday, that would be a good thing in itself. With that said, by this point, if it is a strong tropical wave, it could then start developing and then eventually uh, either move through the Caribbean or kind of lift up toward the Bahamas near Florida and into the Gulf of Mexico. We'll wait and see on that. Again, the next couple of days, the important days to see if it even survives uh, period. Now, here's kind of breaking down a couple of the models. The European model is pretty much like the American model, at least over the next few days into next week. It keeps it a little bit weaker and kind of wants to run some of the moisture a bit closer to the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas by the time we get into next week. As far as long-term development goes, European model is not showing a lot, but it is something to keep an eye on because it's still showing that it is a tropical wave, it is a strong one, but overall kind of a weaker scenario. The Canadian model has been the strongest of them all. It's been taking more of a southern route, turning this into a tropical storm as it nears the eastern Caribbean. Now, that's the only model oh, oh, only of uh, the kind of bigger models that is doing that at this point. So not saying that's going to happen, but that's kind of the range of possibilities. Either a strong tropical wave nearby next week, or if the Canadian model were to be right and these kind of develop a little bit further, it could be a tropical depression or a low end tropical storm. Again, I haven't really talked about it being a hurricane as it moves into the Eastern Caribbean. Nothing is showing that at this point, okay? I'll watch for any changes, but nothing is showing this blowing up tomorrow and Sunday 
into a, a hurricane or anything like that. Now here's why, because in the short term, I showed you there's very dry air out here. So while they are very healthy tropical waves, I don't expect a ton of development through the weekend. And as I mentioned, there is the chance they could just fall apart. Both of these tropical waves could fall apart. But if they hang together, it moves into this area right here that is not as dry. And I look at the winds as well, way up high in the atmosphere. There's not a lot of wind shear. Wind shear, you can think of winds coming in the opposite direction and knocking off the thunderstorms so they don't develop. Wind shear is our friend as we go through the hurricane season. But there's not a lot of wind shear here. There's not as much dry air. So if it hangs together, it could develop a little bit near the Bahamas or even potentially as it works into the Gulf of Mexico as a tropical uh, disturbance. So the water temperatures, again, they are just super warm. You see these kind of purplish shadings here or at least red shadings through the Gulf of Mexico. 30, 31 degrees uh, Celsius. We're we're looking at the water temperatures in the 90s in many spots. My friends in Key West, we have water temperatures in the middle 90s. That's Fahrenheit. So as these tropical waves move in, if they hang together enough and if there is not a lot of wind shear, they could really develop near the Bahamas, parts of the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. And that's why I'm using a little caution with this. Nothing is showing this blowing up into a hurricane. But again, if it hangs together down the road, you see it here, conditions are more favorable. Hopefully they kind of fizzle out somewhat this weekend and just bring us some welcome rain. But we'll wait and see as we go over the next couple days. That is one of the good things about tracking tropical systems that come off the coast of Africa. There is plenty of time to track them. I'm watching everything day and night, watching how the environment is changing. So will it survive the weekend? That'll be the big question. Now, the tropical wave itself will be near the Caribbean, especially northeastern, eastern Caribbean as a whole on Tuesday, and then it will be near the Bahamas later in the week. This is, this is next week. So we'll see again first if it survives the weekend. And then there is the potential that uh, this could be a strong tropical wave, even if it doesn't develop a whole lot, that it slides into the Gulf of Mexico and it could spin up in the Gulf of Mexico. That is possible either out of this first tropical wave or the one back behind it. Down the road or whatever gets the name, the next name on the list is Emily. We haven't had that yet. We've had one hurricane this season. That was Don. It formed briefly. Don actually stuck around for a while, but it became briefly a hurricane uh, in the North Atlantic. That was a couple of weeks ago. Emily, the next name on the list. Franklin after that, and then Gert after that. Now, I want to get into what's going on in the Pacific. There's a Category 4 hurricane out there, Dora. I'll show you that in a moment. Closer look at the Caribbean, Bahamas, you get over toward the Florida Keys, Cuba, Jamaica. We've got a couple of showers nearby. I hope we get a little bit of rain. We need some little flare-up of some rain in Colombia. And my friends in Belize, we had some rain last night in spots and this morning. Now look at Barbados, just off to the east of Barbados. That is a tropical wave moving in. It's not the big one I've been uh, talking about, but there's another tropical wave here that is going to kick into the Eastern Caribbean uh, today and as we go throughout this weekend. So here's the setup before I get into the Eastern Pacific and I'll show you Category 4 uh, Hurricane Dora. Uh, a couple shower storms, Guatemala today. Kind of spotty stuff around, so scattered showers and storms and a lot of it is with the daytime heating. We'll see some of the afternoon and evening storms around. Then by tomorrow, it could be a little bit quieter in some spots, but as that next tropical wave gets going, I showed you that tropical wave that's approaching Barbados right now. As that starts to kick into the Eastern Caribbean, that'll flare up a better chance of some rain and storms. You see it here, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent the Grenadines, Grenada, St. Lucia, Dominica, uh, Guadalupe, better chance of showers and storms by the time we get into Sunday, scattered to widespread Costa Rica and Panama, and still Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Haiti, Dominican, Dominican Republic, Cuba, up through South Florida, and the Bahamas, scattered showers and storms as we work our way into Sunday. Now, here is Dora, a powerful category four hurricane winds, miles per hour have been upwards of 130, 140, kind of fluctuating in strength. Very powerful now, but it should be pretty much peaked out. Now, here's another thing that's going on. Look at this development here. This should develop some up. This is along the coast. Uh, southwest coast of Mexico, and then it's going to swing up here a little bit. So let me show you some of the modeling on this and what I'm seeing. Now, first, let me talk about Dora and this catching your eye, my friends in Southern California. I'll get to that in a second. But here is Dora. Now, Dora still looks to stay south of Hawaii, 
but it will still be a system at that point. Once it gets here, there's going to be some weakening. The water gets cooler. So I expect a little weakening, but it could still be a hurricane or tropical storm just south of Hawaii next week. I'll monitor for any changes. Now, as we get over to this, you see here, again, this parallels the coast and then swings back, but these squiggly lines don't tell the whole story. They never do. I see them all over social media and they look threatening because you have all these squiggly lines coming at you. But here's the thing, over time, once we get uh, about three, four days from now, this area here is going to allow it to really weaken. We're going to see a lot of weakening out of the system, may become a classified system, and then eventually weaken, and most of the models have it actually completely fall apart. And then whatever's left could be a couple showers that kind of drift up toward back toward Mexico, over toward the Baja in uh, Southern California. So again, there's going to be weakening down the road on that. But again, watching for any changes. So Barbados today, you see, again, watching this tropical wave approach. Rain chance will be around. Keep me posted in the comments. Bounces up a little bit in, on Sunday. Once we get on the back side of the tropical wave in Barbados and St. Lucia, you see on Sunday, the rain chance is up to about a 50 to 60% chance of some rain and storms. Jamaica, keep me posted. We've got some showers around right now, a 50% chance of scattered showers and storms for today. In Belize, again, we've already had some rain. Rest of the day, the rain chance is about 30 to 40%. But again, we had some rain and storms around earlier, especially central and southern Belize. We even had some last night. Treaded out into Tobago for us. Again, scattered showers. Isolated flooding remains a threat through the weekend because last weekend we had that big time flooding. So any passing showers could lead to some isolated flooding in some spots. 40% chance of rain today in Grenada, 30% chance tomorrow. Isolated to scatter the next couple days, but again, that tropical wave helps us pick up to about a 50% chance of rain. St. Vincent of the Grenadines on Sunday. Cayman Islands, 50% chance of rain nearby. Not all of us are going to get it, but today is a little more unsettled, so at least we have a chance of some showers. Bahamas, 50% chance today and a 40% chance tomorrow. 40% chance of some scattered showers today in Kirks and, uh, Turks and Caicos, and by Sunday, back up to a 40 percent chance. Dominica, 50 percent chance of rain, mainly late today. Could see some showers tonight. Again, some of this action could be overnight because we have that new tropical wave that is sliding in. Guadalupe and Martinique, rain chance 60 percent as we work our way into Sunday. Puerto Rico, 40 percent chance today. Isolated storm tomorrow, very hot. 50 percent chance on Sunday. Again, favoring afternoon and the evening. So that's when we'll get that better chance of some rain and storms. A 30 percent chance of a passing shower today, U.S. Virgin Islands and the British Virgin Islands. Swinging back toward uh, the Dominican Republic, scattered afternoon storms. Now, in the Dominican Republic, even Puerto Rico, and even in Haiti, not all of us are going to get the rain, but some stronger storms are possible. That can lead to quick runoff on the hillsides. Please be mindful of some of the river crossings as we go over the next couple days. 40 to 50 percent chance of thunderstorms in Haiti. There could be a quick rise in some of the rivers if you've got some of that rain nearby. St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, rain chance up to 40 percent on Sunday. Not a lot of action. Antigua, Barbuda, the next two days, a 20 percent chance. Chance. May see a couple showers kind of rotate around on the backside of that tropical wave. 20% chance in Anguilla over the next few days. St. Martin, save Estacia. 30% chance of rain today, back up to a 30% chance on Sunday. Curacao, yeah, we are mainly dry. Again, small, small rain chance, mainly dry. Aruba, Bonaire, same thing. Again, it is going to be hot. Costa Rica, scattered showers, isolated flooding. Same thing over toward Panama. As we work our way into Guyana, 50% chance of rain today, a 40% chance tomorrow and Sunday. Suriname, isolated this weekend, a 30% chance this weekend. Venezuela, again, slightly better chance on Sunday. Northern Venezuela up to a 40% chance. So we've got one initial wave working into the Caribbean, but the two strong ones are out there. Those are the ones that came off the coast of Africa. Development is possible next week. I'm on top of that for you. In the short term, if you're not getting the rain, we are very hot. And again, that weaker tropical wave moving in, that will bump up our rain chance, especially Eastern Caribbean on Sunday. Long Long season to go through. We're going to be tracking a lot together. Thank you for sharing this channel. I'm going to keep you posted on what's going on 24 7. I'm watching everything. I'm going to be watching these tropical waves. A big update, of course, tomorrow morning. We are going to see together if these tropical waves fight off that dry air and hang together throughout the weekend. I hope you have a great rest of your day.